Monday night. This is the Nico and Knight podcast inside of Memorial Stadium where I bring in a few athletes throughout the week from different sports. Here to my left, I have the one and only Tyrell Pierce. Tyrell has a very inspirational story here today. Tyrell is a D3 product to D1 as only a junior in college. He runs a 46.4, I believe, in the, I think it's 46.45 in the 400 meter run. And for all of my track fans out there, you already know that's smoking fast and he's only looking to improve his time. That's why he's here. That's why he made that draw from D3 to D1. He stood out, he put in the work, he worked while they partied and he reaped all the benefits. So Tyro, man, go ahead and tell the people how you're feeling about being on the show today. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I've seen many interviews that you did in the past, and I was like, man, you got to have me one day. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just on here to, you know, tell my story of how I went from D3 to D1. Hey, man, let's get straight to it. So go ahead, Tyrell. You can go ahead and tell the people right now how you went D3 to D1 by answering this question. Why the University of Nebraska-Lincoln? Um, The reason why I chose Lincoln, you know, it was more of a – it was more of a gut feeling for me. Um, I really didn't have anything specific that really like stood out. I mean, everything here is nice, the facilities, the training table, the resources, but I, I just felt like it was a more of a gut feeling because let me tell you, through the process of the transfer portal, it was I was down to four schools and out of those four, three of them was in Florida. Wow. And I really wanted to go back home. <laughs> I really wanted to go back home. And I don't know, it was something I don't know, it was just a really gut feeling, like something right here that really said, just go to Nebraska, so yeah. Man. Hey, man. Coach Emmanuel played a big part and role into the recruiting process, too. I mean, you know, when I saw that Instagram little uh, clip that or edit that was made about you coming, in, coming to this university, I was stoked because we needed a fourth so bad in that 4x4, four four, bro. And, you know, I'm, I'm expecting big things for us this season. I'm super happy. And for those of you who don't know, me and Tyrell are actually roommates together. He, Coach Emmanuel texted me. He said, hey, man, I got the new guy coming in. Uh, would any of you guys like to live with him? And I was open arms. I was like, oh, man, straight up. Like, we need a fifth guy. Let's bring him in. And so me and him texted and immediately, man, we hit it off. And like I said, me and Tyrell, have a real good relationship so far. We've been going at it in the workouts. No one else decides to, or really wants to even challenge me. But this guy right here, he's got that dog, man. He's got that Kobe mentality. He's got that David Goggins mentality. We're just getting after every day, even if we're both on the ground after. We're over here pushing. We're over here getting after. So, Tyrell, go ahead and tell the people, how did you even go from D3 to D1? And then with that, what is the difference between being a D3 and a D1 athlete? The competition, the facilities, the people. Go ahead and tell the people. Um, it's kind of crazy because uh, when I first got to Knox College, uh, I never would have thought that I would end up being D1. And so through that process, I think just having that hunger to always, like, improve and just really see, like, where I could hit my highest peak at, mm -hmm. that kind of what pushed me. And so when I noticed that I was getting faster each year, it was more like, okay, wait a minute, let me – let me enter the transfer portal and see what happens. And so, you know, it was just a lot of hard work. Um, I did play football at my old school, so it was kind of tough to balance both sports like that. But, you know, eventually it, it came to the conclusion that track was the better sport that I was, like, better in. So that's what I decided to do, and I was able to go D1. And um, as far as the differences, like, there's, there's a lot of differences. Like, I can tell you now, like, when you're at D3, I feel like, the the athletes at D3 are more like they're you know they're not fast as like D1 obviously but like they're more passionate about it you know they they didn't go D1 D2 they went D3 but they were passionate enough to like continue to play the sport that they love and i feel like D1 yeah they're passionate about it but it's like it's all talent here you know everybody's like up here and you know it's, it's like you really have to put in that work i think that's the biggest difference but honestly, there's that's not it's not really too much with track and field between D three and D one besides like the resources. Right. Yeah. I like what you mentioned earlier about, you know, that hunger and that drive to just want to be better. And you mentioned that a lot of D one athletes, they have the talent, but then there's just a bit of a difference. You know, the times aren't as fast, the performances aren't as good. But D three, man, you got that hunger, you just have that drive. And I think that's real interesting. You know, in the sport of track and field, it's not like basketball or football, or really any sport where it's a D three versus D one. In the sport of track and field, you can get walked down by a D three guy. You can get walked down by a D two guy, a JUCO guy, even high school kids. You know, it's <laughs> nobody's safe out here is what I'm trying to get at. Every single person is talented. When you step on that track, anything is possible any given day. Even if you're ranked to be the, the best of the best, you know? And 
yeah, I mean, coming from you know a D three college from from Illinois, I'm also from Illinois as well. Uh, I actually got a scholarship from from that school. Actually, I was talking to their coach. You know, really? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the message I want to get out there with that is that you know it's never too late to start. Each and every single person has a different journey. Your journey was different than my journey. You know, for for, for me out of high school, I told myself if I don't go D one. I'm just going to give up track all in all. Like, I don't want to go D2. I don't want to go D3. I don't even want to go small D1. I want to go to a Big Ten or an NCC or a Pac-12 Division One school. And so if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be here today. And and for you out of high school, too, I mean, I'm sure that you would have loved to go D1 straight out of high school, but that's just not the, how the situation went. You you stayed down. You stayed humble. You got after it. That's amazing, man. So, Tyrell, tell the people, what is the most difficult part of your day? So you made it. This feels like paradise. But at the same time, too, man, the – the show does not stop here. You got to keep on grinding. If anything, you got to go harder than what you did at your D3 school at this Division One college. So what is the hardest part about your day about now being a D1 athlete? Uh, I want to say the mental aspect. Uh, I feel like when I was at my D3 school, you know, is we get there, every practice, everybody practice at the same time. You know, you're just going through the motion, right? Like, I was obviously the top runner at my school, so like I didn't have any competition at practice. Like I'm basically running, running against myself, and so now that I'm here, it's more like all right, like there's people that's faster than me, obviously, and so like that kind of pushes me more, and like it kind of get to you like mentally, cause like okay, like I'm not used to losing reps like this, and but you know it's what I need to get better as an athlete, and I really enjoy that part the most. Listen, listen, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. If you're staying around with slow people, bro, you're not going to get fast. But in your case, you know, you were around slower people, but you you had that, that dream to go D1. Now you're D1 and you're surrounded by dogs, just surrounded by fast people. You have no other choice but to become better at what you want to become better at. And that's not even just within the sport of track and field. That's with everything you do. That's when if you're at your job. If you're surrounded by good people, you're going to improve on your work. But if you're surrounded by people who don't want it as good as bad as you, if you're surrounded by people who just do nonsense, you're going to start doing nonsense. And I've, I've caught myself in my life, you know, I hang around good people and I have good times in my life and I hang around bad people. And next thing you know, I got bad things falling, out, falling on me. I got people telling me to do stupid things and you're doing stupid things. Next thing you know it. So that's the key, man. Surround yourself by good, positive people. And going D1 is no joke, dude. I mean, it is hard. I mean, this is the best of the best. This is the, the, the top 1%. And I like how, you, like what you mentioned earlier, I know we're going back on this, but what you mentioned about just the hunger, a lot of D1 athletes don't have that. I'm, you obviously know Fred Curley. Fred Curley, all he talks about on Twitter is about how, you know, these D1 kids, man, they don't want it for real. Like coming from a D3 to a D1, I mean, there's just something about it. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited for me and you to be teammates this year. We're going to cook up on the track, man. So Tyro, go ahead and tell the... Go ahead and tell the rest of the people. So you played football your old school, and for all my football fans out there, they ended up running the triple option. Tyrell here was a receiver. <clears throat> he was a receiver on triple option, and so there was not a lot of passing going on. So he was engaging in a lot of blocking, probably a lot of jet sweet handoffs randomly because I used to play I used to play uh, quarterback in high school, and then we ran the triple option. So I know everything about that. So go ahead and tell what's your craziest story between like track and football almost because you're doing both sports. You're grinding. You're going after it. So like, what is your craziest like football story and track story at that D three school? Uh, for football, uh, this crazy story it it kind of changed my life. So it, it makes it a crazy story. But uh, going into my sophomore year of football, I tore my ACL and my meniscus, oh, snap. and so like throughout that journey of recovery, I really hit like rock bottom. For the first time ever, and like my mental health was like so bad, and like through that process, you know, I was like able to like connect myself with like the men above God, and so like I kind of developed my relationship with that, and I started to like rethink about my life and like what's my why, and like why am I doing this, and so like it kind of shaped me to the person that I am now going through that process. And, you know, for me, I feel like everything happens for a reason, whether that's the good or the bad. And so for me to go through that, I, it was, like, really much needed. Even though at the time in that moment I was like, what is going on right now? <laughs> like, like, why me? Like, oh, right now, like, I'm about to have the best football season of my life. And now it just – it's so that was – that was that's that's my crazy football story. For track, oh, uh, I got a, quite a few. I got a, quite a few. Um <laughs> Uh, so my first, so we went to Iowa for our indoor meet. This is my first time running on a bank track, <laughs> and I'm getting in my blocks. Tell what a bank track is. So a bank track is basically it's an indoor track, and basically 
the curves are like slanted. It's like you're running on a hill and then down. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. Like this is my first time because I'm an old school. We had a flat track. Right. Never ran on a bank track. And so I'm getting in my blocks and I'm like leaning. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is this is not it. And so like the entire time I'm like, I'm about to fall start. Like, I'm about to like literally fall start, but you know, I was able to like keep my balance a little bit, and it was my first time running against other D1 athletes because we was at Iowa, and I ended up winning the entire like I won my heat, but I, w I had the fastest time at the end, and so that was a pretty cool moment running at Iowa, running on a bank track, and you know, just really like seeing like other D1 athletes. So that was <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was that that really after that moment, I was like, oh, maybe I really should enter the transfer portal, you know? But so that was a really cool moment. Yeah. That's an awesome story, man. I correlate with both of the stories. So for what you guys mentioned about that bank track, me, I was lucky. My first time running on a bank track was an 800. Okay, so, you know, for an 800-meter runner, all you're doing is literally just lining up, going like this and going. But if you're in the 400, you're in the blocks and you're waiting for the gun to go off. And any twitch, any movement before that gun goes off in college, you're immediately getting tossed, bro. Like, you're, you're out of there. So, yeah. hey, good for you for not false starting on that, man, because that does get crazy. For your first time ever running on a track like that, you don't know what to expect. What lane were you in, by the way? Were you in six or five or something yeah, up I, there? I was in outside lane. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Listen, so bank tracks, they start from – the numbers basically go from lowest to highest, and so does the level of curveness, I guess, is the right terminology. So, one, you're basically level. It's, it's no difference than running on a flat track. But if you're in lane six, you are almost falling off the track. Like, if you are not balanced, you will roll down the track. If you're not careful, especially at Iowa, Iowa has a state-of-the-art, world-class indoor <laughs> bank track too. So that's a crazy one to start it off as. But for um, as for the injury aspect, you no, know, I had I didn't have the meniscus thing, but I had a fracture in my shin my freshman year. And so your injury from football probably was like accidental, right? Probably just on a stupid play. Just mm -hmm. literally, my, mine was from an accumulation of just going way too hard with not enough recovery. I wasn't getting enough sleep. I was going way too hard on the morning runs. I was going too hard on the workouts. Like I did not have a break period because that's how bad I wanted. I was willing to put myself through hell and back just to try to make nationals, just to try to to prove I belonged at the D1 school. And the next thing you know, I'm on rock bottom. I'm on crutches. I'm over there having to watch all my teammates and friends compete at my first year of college. And then, you know, people are like, dang, man, they brought this guy in just for him to be on the sidelines, just to be, for him to be on the bench. And it's like, man, so that's just like you, how I found my relationship with God too. And I'm like, man, like, what's my why? What's my purpose? So that's cool. We do share a lot of similar things, man. We run, almost run the same event, working out together in the same house. Both be on the game with it. So, Tyrell, what is the biggest difference? Let's talk about the, the culture shock of coming from a D3 Illinois college to here. Because I don't know if you noticed, man, but, like, you're not like everybody else that is here. And neither was I and neither is some of the people on our team. Like, whenever we're around, bro, we are a vibe. We're, <laughs> we're being loud. We're being interactive. Like, there's so many different cultures and so many different people that are here. So, what is the – like, was it a culture shock when you first came here? Um, Shockingly, no. Um, So, Nas College was a – private liberal arts school, you know, so like I've seen almost everything, you know, like it, it was, I was more shocked when I got there. Like I was like, holy crap, where am I? Like what, what is, what is this? But so when I got here, I was kind of used to it. Uh, what really shocked me the most was the amount of students here. Like, you know, Nas College was barely 1100 people. Wow. You get here, it's 26,000. <laughs> and so like, I remember just walking around campus trying to get to my classes. I'm like, Oh, like my anxiety started going crazy. I'm like, this is like, it's so many people here, and so that so that was pretty crazy. But it wasn't really much of a culture change or shocking or anything like that for me, cause you know I, I went to school in Knox College in right. Galesburg, Illinois. Like you, <laughs> you'll see about everything there anyway. Everything so, yeah. and everything. Tyrell is actually one of the most outgoing people I think I've ever met at the school, bro. Whenever, like, at first when I met you, you know, you were shy, you were timid, you're like, hey, man, I'm Tyrell, nice to meet you, Melo. But then as soon as the next day hit, as soon as the weekend hit, this dude was a different vibe, a different animal, bro. He's t talkative, man. He's like, what's up, dude? My name's Tyrell, man. Nice to meet you, man. He's doing things I've never even seen before. I'm like, this dude is insane, bro. Like, you you do not have no shame at all, bro. <laughs> like, you aren't scared of anything. So let me ask you, where did you get that from? Where did you get, let's say, where did you get the confidence from? That's, that's my biggest thing. Do you practice being confident when speaking to people or just doing things? Or do you genuinely just do things without even noticing that you're doing them? So, like, I'm going to be honest. I'm heavy on TikTok and YouTube. So, like, <laughs> I'll see something. I'll be like, all right, let me try that. And so, oh, and so, yeah, so basically, so, like, and then sometimes, like, I'll be out and about and, like, I really don't be knowing what I be saying half the times. And they're just, you know, I just be saying stuff. That's all it is. I just be saying stuff. 
nothing much. But I do have confidence though. But I just be saying whatever things come in my head. I speak my mind. That's what it is. I speak my mind. Hey, go ahead. If you're speaking your mind on this, go ahead and tell the people uh, something inspiring about yourself. About you know what it takes to go from D three to D one. For anybody out there who's watching, wants to become a D one athlete, what does it take? You have to make sacrifices. That is that is the number one thing. You have to make sacrifices. Uh, I remember, crazy story. Uh, it was my last season before I entered the transfer portal, going into indoor season, uh, because I'm a you know playing football. You don't get the fall training like all the other track athletes. So I made a sacrifice to stay on to stay on campus and not go home for Christmas and not see my family and friends. And like during that time, there was nobody on campus. It was just wow. me. And like I would go to the indoor track, practice by myself. My coach would come come there every now and then, but it was just really just me. And like the campus is closed, so like I had to beg the athletic director to like to open the doors for me to like live and run. And so like I just made that sacrifice to like, all right, let me not go home because you know if I go home, I'm not going to work out. So let me go home. I mean, let me stay on campus and like just put the work in every single day. And I think if I don't do that, I won't be here. And so during that sacrifice, it really, you know, that jump from a high 48 to a low 46 is like, that's what happened was that sacrifice. And and one thing, another thing that I want to say is like, you have to be like, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And so like, you really have to like, put yourself in a position where you're just isolated and it's like just you. So you can really like, just understand like what do you have to do and what you need to do to like really go from here to here and once you figure that out and make those sacrifices you can literally do anything you want and remember put god first always man that's deep i don't feel there's nothing i can even say to even go ahead and top that everybody wants to be a beast but nobody wants to do what it takes to be a beast and this is a living example of that right here i think that's the best way to go ahead and close out this podcast man so tyro Appreciate you for being on the pod, man. Thanks for having me. Amazing story. Nico and Knight, out, guys. Peace.